For the fire, let's add the couple of layers of smoke to it. Let's go to our create. We'll just go down to our particle system again. And this time, let's just call this one smoke, and we'll call it dark. So this will be kind of a, sm a dark smoke that's going to come from it. Go ahead and left click and just drag it into the fire. And while it's in there, go ahead and take your position, put it to zero, zero, zero. All right, we'll go ahead and lower our curves, click on our render rollout, find the cloud black, and drop it into the material slot right there. So now we have our darker puffs of smoke that we're going to work with. The uh, option for sort mode, let's go ahead and change that one to do a by distance. You could also do oldest first, uh, either way. Um, would have some good results to it. Up at the top, on the duration, I'm going to set this one to 1. The start delay is 0, the start lifetime. The lifetime on this one, let's go ahead and do a variance between them. We're going to do just a slight variance. The smoke's going to be close to about the same, so we'll say that the, uh, the value will be like a 1.75 to a 2. For our starting speed, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and use speed on this one. So we'll do a constant of two values. We'll say it's going to start speed will be about a one. Actually, let's do a 0.75 to a one right here. There we go. That'll work. All right. And then the start size, let's go ahead and do a two values for that. And the start size on this one, let's go for one. And then we'll take it up to about 1.25. Yeah. So you just want to make sure that it feels close to the same size. Once we start doing our our color lifetime and things, it'll will kind of feed into the shape of it. All right. Our rotation. Same thing for rotation. We want those two values. We'll go for a. Uh, we'll just do this one a little bit different. We'll say it's a negative 180 to a positive 180. So again, you could do a 360 if you wanted to, or you could have it go back and forth this way. The start color, we'll leave it at white for the moment since we're doing that kind of that darker tone. And then we'll just take the uh, alpha though and we'll drop the alpha value down. We'll take it down to about a, we'll say 150. See how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Might be a little bit too soft. Let's try a 160. We don't want to lose it completely. We still want to make sure we feel like it's coming from there. All right. And then gravity and velocity, we'll leave it zeros. The uh, Simulating for this one, we'll go ahead and change to world though, because we do want to make sure that if you move it, that it doesn't get stuck with the item, it just kind of falls behind it. Alright, and then for the max particles, you can leave it at a thousand. I'm just going to take it down to a hundred, should be fine. Uh, the emission and the shapes, let's go ahead and go to those. The emission rate, let's go ahead and put that at about four. Um, if you wanted to have a huge amount of smoke coming from it billowing out, you could do something like this, but we just want to complement it with just a few pieces. So anywhere between 4 to 10. We'll go for about a 5 on it. The shape on this is going to be the cone and we'll go ahead and center it though. We want to make it smaller. So remember the uh, radius. We just want it feeling like, like we did before. We want the smoke to feel like it's coming from the fire. Um, not like it's coming outside of the fire but right within it. So let's do about a 0.1 let's see 0.15 somewhere around there. All right, and then the angle itself, let's not have it opened up so much. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Let's see. Um, somewhere around a, looks like about a five. Yeah, that'll look good. We'll see how it feels once it starts rising up from the, the bottom part of it. All right, so we've got an angle of five, radius of 1.5, where it is coming from the base. Our force over lifetime, let's go ahead and check this one. So. We're going to use this one like we did before. We'll use it and uh, and have it going upwards. I'm going to do the space under world, and then we'll go ahead and put the. We're just going to use the y on this one. So do about a 0.25 to a 0.5. So a couple of different pieces to it. Rather than having it all the same height, the same speed going up, we'll have some of the pieces going a little slower. All right. So let's go ahead and go to our color over lifetime and click on it. Let's start on making the uh, the basic elements like we've done before. Um, we're going to take the corners and drop them down to black. We want to make sure that it, when it gets to the very top it just does a nice fade out. 
over on the left side, we don't want to lose too much of the dark. Um, so I'm going to take down, but I don't want to go all the way gone with it. I want it to still be kind of like it's coming from the flames. So you'll see that little bit of black here and there coming directly from it. So somewhere around like a 40 range, we'll see how that works with it. And then just left click on that top bar for the alpha to make another one. We'll make this one around 25% in. And this one, let's take this one to around, let's see how we like it, maybe around 100, 110. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to be able to see it just enough that we're seeing it coming from the fire. All right. And then the last thing we want to do is add a, a little bit more of a tint to it. So there's black in there, but let's go ahead and add a little bit of that reddish brown that we've been adding to the other ones. So I'm going to go in here, grab a uh, little bit more orange to it, somewhere around there, and then we'll just take it down until we get kind of dark. There we go. So right on the edge about here, you should be seeing a little bit of brown, that darker brown being mixed in with it. All right, so my value, 51, 34, and 27 on it. And we'll set the location out about 45% in. All right, and then on the left and the right side, um, instead of being on the white, let's go ahead and take that down. We'll take it down to more of a black tone. Actually, let's see. If we take it too black, it might be a little too harsh on it. Um, take it down to, for me, I'm going to go for about a 23% on it. And then same thing for this side. We'll take this one and drop it down as well. There we go. All right. Go ahead and close that one out for you. So the next thing we want to do, size over lifetime. And we'll click on our little curve window right here. We'll open this up. Size over lifetime, when you click on it, the, uh, the size of it, we know that we actually want it to be bigger right when it comes off, similar to like we did before. So our height of it coming off, let's go for about a 2.5 range. So the height of it, the thickness of it, when it gets up to here, um, it'll go out to as wide as 2.5 for the scale size. And then we can actually take from here, let me simulate this again. Let's take the starting point though. Let's drag the starting point all the way back down. We don't, we don't want the starting point to be at one per se. We want it to be a little less than so it feels like it's small in the flame and then coming out. I'm going to take it down to right around, looks like a good one is about a 0.5 or so, somewhere around there. And then over on the ending point, I'm going to actually raise this up a little bit. Let's see if we can get a, a nice curve out of it. Looks like it's pretty close, but I'm going to go ahead and add a center point, a key right here, just double click on it. And uh, I'm going to add it so we can add a little bit more of a a gradual pull to it here. So we'll keep it where it's small and then right when it gets to there starts to billow out and then gets up to it. There we go. So that feels more like the smoke is kind of puffing right towards the top before it gets really heavy and intense. Alright. Um, the other part, let me go ahead and go back to our color over lifetime. I'm still seeing kind of a little pop down there at the bottom with the black. So let's go ahead and take our our alpha on that one. And I'm going to drag that one. We'll see what, let's see, if we take it down to zero. Still going to have a couple issues. I may have to raise the the piece itself up a little bit higher just so that we don't have so much of a conflict between them. Um, the other option when you do have something like this where they're if they're fighting each other for it, the other thing that you can do if you go into your render there is a sorting fudge which is basically saying you can force a a rendering element it'll try to either render something in front or behind and it's whether it's negative or positive value and we could go for like an, a negative 10 and then more often than not, it'll try to fix the issue with it. All right. Let's see if that was... Ah, there we go. So positive 10 goes back, and then negative 10 comes forward. There we go. 
All right. So again, render sorting fudge, just stick it to 10. That way you can kind of force that rendering element to be in the back. All right, so looking pretty good. This is our first thing of smoke that we're doing to it. Um, we're gonna be doing more to it uh, with another layer as well, but let's finish this off with a rotation over lifetime. And uh, we'll do a little bit of rotation here. We'll just do two values. We'll do a uh, negative one. Actually, we'll just do 0 to 360. Let's see. So a little bit too much movement. You see how it's like really spinning right there? Um, let's try a little bit less. We'll do uh, about negative 20 to 20. There we go. Because we still we want it to look more like it's puffing, not that it's actually rotating. All right. So there we have our basic setup for it there. Um, that'll finish off our smoke dark, and then we'll start working on the next type of smoke right after that.